Hello everyone, I am going to tell you about anti-diabetic drugs. Before going to the drugs, we need to know how our body manages the glucose. So, we will, it will be very easy for us to know the action of drugs and where exactly they are acting. So, let's get started with the glucose metabolism in our body. Okay, so when we consume glucose, we can either consume it in the form of simple glucose or we can also consume it in the form of complex, complex sugar like starch or disaccharide, polysaccharide. So in the small intestine, this glucose is absorbed into the metabolic circulation. With the help of an enzyme, alpha glucosidase, the complex sugar is converted into simple glucose and absorbed into the metabolic circulation. After going into the metabolic circulation, this is further utilized by the peripheral cell with the help of a receptor called as GLUT4 receptor. But this GLUT4 receptor is present inside the cell. So how the glucose is exposed to GLUT4 receptor? With the help of insulin. Now, how is insulin secreted? Glucose also releases a peptide known as glucagon-like peptide 1. Glucagon-like peptide 1 has receptors on pancreas. Glucagon-like receptor uh, glucagon GLP-1 receptor. GLP-1 will take up GLP, receptor will take up GLP-1 and this will stimulate beta cell to release insulin as well as amylin. So insulin will go there help in exposing GLUT4 receptor to the glucose. One more thing is secreted amylin. GLP-1 also help in delaying the gastric emptying and if gastric emptying is delayed, what it will lead to decrease glucose absorption from the small intestine. This action is also shared by amylin which is also released by the action of GLP-1 on beta cell. Now, we have our kidney and our kidney consists of proximal convoluted tubule and we all know that we have a co-transporter called as SGLT2 that is sodium glucose co-transporter. What will it does? Sodium glucose co-transporter will take it take the glucose from the urine and this will also goes to the systemic circulation. Also, we know in our liver, two process takes place, gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis which leads to the formation of what? Glucose. This glucose will also end up to the metabolic circulation. So, whatever excess glucose we are having in our metabolic circulation, what it, where it goes? It goes to the beta cell with the help of another receptor called as GLUT2 receptor. This GLUT2 receptor is a facilitated receptor. What is mean by facilitated receptor? That whatever amount of glucose is present in excess in the plasma in comparison with beta cell, only those glucose will be taken up. For example, if beta cell is having uh, 40 gram and plasma is having 60 grams, so only 20 gram will be taken up by the beta cell and it will lead to the blockage of ATP associated potassium channel and calcium will be inside the beta cell which will later get uh, the result into the release of insulin only. So this is how the glucose is managed in our body. Now let's start with our drugs. So the first class of drug, first class of drug we can act over here where alpha glucosidase if alpha glucosidase is inhibited from converting complex glucose uh, complex sugar to the glucose it will ultimately lead to the uh, reduction in blood glucose level so we have alpha glucosidase inhibitor it is fda approved for diabetes uh, type 2 it is helpful in uh, postprandial hyperglycemia but there are certain side effect of alpha glucosidase inhibitor what is it because this complex sugar is not getting converted into glucose, it is subjected to the gut bacteria. And this gut bacteria uh, will consume this complex sugar and releases a lot of amount of gas. Therefore, the most common complication is flatulence. Also, the complex sugar is osmotic. So, it will also lead to the osmotic diarrhea. So, this is the first class of drug which we can use for diabetes. Now, the second class of drug. We can use second class of drug related to the glucagon like peptide 1. This glucagon like peptide 1 we can use it in two ways. First we can either use GLP-1 agonist or incretin agonist or we can also make use of DPP-4 antagonist. And sorry I forget to tell you one thing. This GLP-1 is metabolized in plasma with the help of an enzyme called as DPP-4. So if we use DPP-4 antagonist or we use GLP-1 agonist this will lead ultimately to the release of insulin from beta cell and decrease in our glucose. So the problem which uh, appears with this uh, GLP agonist or DPP-4 antagonist is because it causes stimulation of beta cell. So it, it is 
uh, responsible for pancreatitis because of excess stimulation of beta cells second because it does what delayed gastric emptying so delaying of gastric emptying leads to what uh, there is a feeling of uh, fullness in the stomach which leads to the nausea and vomiting we have a feeling of satiety due to which the another side effect is weight loss so uh, because of this uh, side effect that weight loss side effect liraglutide which is one of a uh, incretin that is glp1 agonist it is uh, approved for obesity now let's see the class 3 class 3 drug which we can use is in amylin amylin analogs what does this amylin does this again delay the gastric emptying and will result into the reduced uh, reduction reduced absorption of glucose from the small intestine the drug which we use is pramlentide uh, there is no relation with beta cell okay this uh, glp1 agonist uh, is acting on beta cell therefore it will all, it is only useful for type 2 diabetes mellitus but in case of amylin if we use amylin there is no relation with beta cell therefore it can be used in both the type 1 as well as type 2 diabetes mellitus uh, I, mechanism of action i have already told because of delayed gastric emptying they, it will reduce the glucose absorption now same uh, action that because of gastric emptying delaying we will have two common side effect that is nausea vomiting and also weight loss one more use we know that if a person is in insulin and he is given uh, amylin along with insulin then it will help in reduction of doses of insulin for example if we are giving 20 m 20 units of insulin after giving amylin along with amylin we can use uh, 10 10 uh, 10 units of insulin but the problem is it is uh, it is having an uh, acidic ph therefore this two drug that is amylin analog and insulin should not be combined in same syringe okay <laughs> now moving on to the fourth class of drug which is insulin insulin again can be used for both the type 1 as well as type 2 diabetes mellitus there are different type of insulin preparation like short acting insulin intermediate acting long acting and the so uh, nowadays we are also using uh, the inhaled insulin which is the shortest acting one afraza and longest acting insulin is digludec now side effect uh, which we know is hypoglycemia of course hypoglycemia is a common side effect of insulin second is lipodystrophy because of continuous subcutaneous injection of insulin it leads to lipodystrophy also we have hypokalemia as a side effect of insulin and also lipo hypertrophy we know the mechanism of action of insulin and insulin is a very big topic uh, we will discuss about it later now moving to the class 5 drug which are oral hypoglycemic agent which will act on this that is blocking the atp associated potassium channel and leading to the release of insulin there are two type of drugs which has same mechanism of action that is sulfonylurease and also mesgitinides sulfonylureas are there are two type two generation first and second generation first generation is not much used because it is less potent and have high side effect second generation are uh, used because it is more potent and has less side effect a common side effect is hypoglycemia because insulin is released it may lead to the hypoglycemia now moving to the next category of drugs moving to the next category of drug there is oral hypoglycemic agent which will reduce the hepatic glucose secretion these are biguanates which consist of metformin other drugs in this class have been banned and metformin is a drug of choice for both the treatment as well as prophylaxis of diabetes it is also useful in other uh, things such as because it is also useful in non alcoholic fatty liver disease it is useful in aids related metabolic syndrome and also in anti psychotic related weight gain so how does it act it uh, releases amp kinase which reduces gluconeogenesis and therefore it will be helpful in reducing the blood glucose level by its action on uh, liver plus it also decreases the insulin resistance therefore Uh, it will reduce the blood glucose level a uh, very common side effect of metformin is lactic acidosis other it long term use will lead to the vitamin b12 deficiency uh, because it is uh, because it causes defect in the absorption of vitamin b12 from the intestine next class of drug is uh, which will act on this in your kidney on the sodium uh, glucose co transporter if we block sodium glucose to co transporter with the help of inhibitor what it will does it will reduce the absorption of glucose from the urine so this will ultimately reduce this uh, glucose uh, 
going into the metabolic circulation and ultimately leads to the reduction of blood glucose level but a very common side effect is because it causes increase in sodium and increase in glucose excretion glucose in urine causes uti which is the most common side effect of sglt2 inhibitor and the most common organism which causes this is candida next because sodium goes into the urine it also leads to the loss of water and if water is lost from our body what is the result of it dehydration and hypotension okay okay moving on to the next class of drug the oral hypoglycemic agent which is responsible for reducing the insulin resistance insulin resistance is seen in type 2 diabetes mellitus therefore this class of drug is useful for type 2 diabetes mellitus that is thiazolidinediones how it act it stimulate PPAR gamma receptor which is a nuclear receptor after stimulating this receptor it will lead to release release of transcription factor and this transcription factor will have three effect first it will decrease the insulin resistance so insulin resistance will be uh, decreased so it will help us second it also increases glut4 production so this glut4 will be increased so uh, uptake of glu uh, glucose from by the peripheral cell will also increase and also it causes adipocyte proliferation so this is the reason why why the weight gain is a common side effect of this classifications of drug however in our india only pioglitazone is used rest of the drugs have been banned because there is a risk of cancer even with pioglitazone there is a risk of bladder cancer but being a cheaper drug it is available as patient cannot afford the expensive drug uh, in other countries like us and uk pioglitazone is also uh, banned moving on to next category of drugs one so the next category of drug is miscellaneous drug which is tried for diabetes mellitus uh, first among them is uh, do dopamine agonist uh, like bromocriptine is now used for type 2 diabetes mellitus what it does it reduces the hypothalamic drive for hyperglycemia therefore uh, you helping us in reducing blood glucose level second we can also try bile binding agent that is uh, colecevlam it helps uh, us by reducing the glucose absorption by binding to this bile acids third we can also use dual ppar agonist so the drug which has been approved is saroglitazar and ra ragaglitazar it stimulate ppar alpha and gamma alpha will leads to reduction in the triglyceride therefore also help in weight loss and gamma uh, receptor will reduces glucose uh, glucose level in the body how we already know because ppr gamma will lead to the reduction in insulin resistance by secreting transcription factor so guys this is all about the diabetes uh, anti diabetic drug not actually all but a little about diabetic drug i have tried to mug up everything in short now you may refer the book and if you found any difficulty you can contact me thank you bye bye